Greetings from Brother Stephan again. I'm a student and witness of the one true Son of God. To all the inhabitants of the earth, I share this gospel as a witness to all nations, the gospel of the kingdom. The first Bible study I posted called Jesus was God and with God in the beginning lays the foundation for all the rest of the Bible studies that I will be posting on YouTube. In order to fully understand the New Testament scriptures, you must understand and know the truth about what took place in the beginning. Christ even said, I come not to destroy the law, but to fulfill it, which means add to it, to make sense of it. So before I get into my New Testament Bible studies, I want to clarify contradictions and false doctrines about the beginning so we can precisely understand the New Testament scriptures. So in my study, Jesus was God and with God in the beginning, I explained that God was creating during the first six, I explained what God was creating during the first six days of creation. In my next Bible studies, uh, I will be rightly dividing the word of God to collect more details about what happened on the third, the fourth, and the sixth day. I do not have Bible studies on the first, second, and fifth day because there are just not enough scriptures in the Bible to do a Bible study um, on those topics or on the, about those days. So if you have not witnessed my first um, Bible study, Jesus was God and with God in the beginning, I suggest that you go watch that Bible study first, then come back to this one. But now let's jump into the third day. And this is Genesis chapter one, verse nine, when Jesus creates dry ground, rivers and vegetation. And God said, let the waters under the ferment be gathered together unto one place. This is King James Version translation. I have put in parentheses and in bold print my translations of certain words so that the reader can understand it more fluently. So if you was to read this, in my translation, it will say, and Jesus said, let the oceans under the sky be gathered together unto one place. Now, if you read that in my translation, it makes it easier for people in this day and age, particularly in the United States of America that speak English, can understand it. So. And Jesus said, let the oceans under the sky be gathered together unto one place. In my first Bible study, Jesus was God and Jesus was with God in the beginning. I explained exactly what the firmament is. I will go over just briefly um, in this study. So on the second day, um, this would be Genesis verse Genesis chapter 1 verse 6. So on the second day, God created the earth's core and the atmosphere. And we'll just go over these scriptures briefly. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And I explained that the reason we, we can know what the firmament is, is because in the middle of the ocean, we already know what's there on our planet and it is a hot core. So when God said, let there be a firmament, this is when God put the hot core in the middle of the ocean. And by putting the hot core in the middle of the ocean, this is why we have an atmosphere. This is why we have gravity. This is what keeps us, um, pulled pretty much even human beings pulled to the middle of the earth this is what gravity is so um on the second day god's create god creates he put he creates the earth core put it in the middle of the ocean which gives us an atmosphere 
Um, now, if you go, this is Genesis, same thing, chapter one, verse eight. It said, and God called the firmament. Now, remember, the firmament actually talks about two different things. The firmament talks about the core of the earth and the atmosphere that it produces. So if you go back to this picture, most people think that our atmosphere starts above sea level, above ground, but this is not true. Our atmosphere starts underneath the earth, underneath the soil, underneath the sea. And it starts, our atmosphere starts with the core of the earth. But here in verse eight, God put a distinction between the firmament, which was below the earth, which is the core of the earth, and the firmament, which was above um, sea level or, or above the dry land. And God called the firmament, he's talking about the atmosphere above the oceans, heaven. Same thing. I explained this in my last study. All the word heaven means is sky. We don't use the word heaven today like people used it back then. When people said heaven, um, when the King James Version Bible was, tr was translated, heaven just simply means the sky. Today we take heaven and we try to only put the definition on there that heavens means something far, 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 far out of space that we only get to experience when we die and go to heaven. That is not biblical um, in, in any sense. All, when the, most of the time when the Bible is referring to heaven, it's talking about different layers of the sky. In this verse, um, when God called us, he's talking about the sky, the immediate sky, as soon as you leave the ground, um, the sky that we can look up and see the clouds. God called that firmament the sky. And God said, let the waters under the firmament be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. Just read this again in my translation. And God said, let the oceans under the sky be gathered together unto one place and let dry land appear. And it was so. This is when the core of the earth, when the when the water from the planet begin to cool some of the core of the earth. The cooling of the core became dry land. And God called the dry land earth. That so the actually the earth. What is the earth? The earth is the firmament. But God gives it a different name under different circumstances. Once the core of the earth was cooled by the water, when it rised in and was cooled by the water, God called God named this the firmament earth at this time. And the gathering together of the waters called he seas. So when God created when the when God created the earth, the word seas is separate from the word ocean or what the Bible used waters. The waters are the ocean. Basically what God said when he created the firmament, he called the dry land earth and then the, the pockets of water that is between the dry lands and stuff like that, he called the seas. This is not the sea. These are oceans and smaller bodies of water are called seas. And then we have even smaller, we get into river, lakes, ponds. So we're going to get into, this is when we're going to start rightly dividing the word of God and kind of see what took place on the third day um, when God created the dry lands and the seas. And we're going to start this off in Psalm 78, 13. He, referring to Christ, divided the sea and caused them to pass through. And he made the waters to stand as an heap. This word heap means tidal wave. And I put a picture here so you can clearly see exactly what the Bible is talking about. So God, so this scripture lets you know 
that on the third day, when God was creating the dry land and the seas, it say he divided the sea, which means it's different seas in different places and caused them to pass through the dry land. And he made the oceans stand as a tidal wave. Here, I'm just going to go back to Genesis 1 in the beginning so you can understand that in the beginning, there was, it was nothing but water. And that was um, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form. It was empty, void, which means useless, and darkness was upon the surface of the waters. So in the beginning, there was nothing but water. And the spirit of God, which is oxygen or wind, moved upon the surface of the oceans. Now, I believe a lot of people have a problem when they when I say the spirit of God is nothing but wind, because in our minds, we was always taught that the spirit of God was something so mystical or magical that we can't even comprehend it, explain it or anything like that. But that is not the case. Um. The spirit of God is just oxygen or wind. So when you go back to Genesis 1 and 1, it, and the wind moved upon the face of the oceans, which makes perfect sense that there was oxygen in the beginning. In my last study, Jesus um, was with God and was God in the beginning. I said that in multiple verses in the Bible, they either refer to wind or oxygen as the spirit of God or as the breath of God. And when we go into this next scripture, you are kind of going to see what I was talking about. That's Job 30, 17. By the breath of God. Here is called the spirit of God. Here is called the breath of God. But it's one and the same thing. And in this verse, you're going to be able to clearly tell that it's talking about wind. So let's continue to read. By the breath of God, wind, frost is given. So by wind, snow is given. And the broth, which is, this is talking about large bodies of water, is straightened. Um, this word straightened mean all it means is a narrow is a narrowed or straight uh, passageway of water. Um, it creates a narrow passage of water connected to the ocean. And actually, in the New Testament, Jesus used this as a parable. If you go to when you read the New Testament, there's a scripture that say when Christ says, "Enter ye in." The straight gate, um, actually, that is a short parable. And what Jesus is referring to here, um, he, he is actually referring to a body of, he's referring to a body of water. He said, enter ye in the straight, narrow way. Uh, because broad is the way, talking about the large bodies of water that lead it to destruction. And narrow and straight is the way that leadeth unto le eternal life. That was actually a parable. And what Jesus was talking about was um, large bodies of water and narrow um, passageways that connect um, or come from large bodies of water. So let's go to Job 37 and 6. For he saith to the snow, be you on the earth, likewise to the small rain and to the great rain of his strength. So if this is a picture that I added so you can be able to see exactly what a straight is. Um, so in the beginning, when God on the second day, when God on the third day, when God was uh, creating, when he created the dry land, he also um, created seas. This is what you got the Persian Gulf here, the Gulf of Omen here. And here's an example of what a straight is. So this is what the, these scriptures are talking about. This is what Jesus was talking about when he said, enter ye in the straight. And also that is what these scriptures are talking about when it say by his, um, by the wind, frost is given and large bodies of water is straightened. Um, 
and that's what it means right here and that, this is what it's referring to so let's go to Psalms 33 and 7 um, he gathereth the waters of the sea together he gathereth the waters these scriptures are saying the same thing he's gathering waters moving waters um, making boundaries on the earth together as a and heap once again is a tidal wave and um, Psalms 33 and 7 is the same thing when we're talking about here in Psalm 78 13 the way God was dispersing water in the beginning was by tidal waves He layeth up the depth in storehouses. This verse right here, when it says he layeth up the depth in storehouses, all is he doing is talking about the deep layers of the ocean. So he said he gathered the waters of the sea together with tidal waves. So why you have tidal waves on the very top of the of the oceans? And he said he layeth up the depth in storehouses. All he is referring to here is the deep layers of the ocean and then this next picture i just give you an example so you can see what god means when he's talking about he layeth up the depth in storehouses here you have the ocean that we our boats are on that we swim in and we have different depth layers of ocean and this is all the scriptures is referring to So these are the depth in storehouses. Exodus 15 and 8. And with the blast of thy nostrils. Once again, this blast is referring to the spirit of God, the breath of God, which is referring to oxygen and the wind. And with the blast, wind blowing of thy nostrils. Um, the oceans were gathered together, the waters stood upright as an heap. Same thing, the water stood up like a tidal wave, and the depths were congealed. All this means is they did not move in the heart, which means the depthness of the sea. So I'm going to re I'm going to reread that in. King James Version, then I reread it in my version. And with the blast of thy nostrils, the waters were gathered together, the floods stood upright as in heap, and the depthness were congealed in the heart of the sea. Now I'm going to reread that same verse, but in my translation. And with the wind of thy nostrils the oceans were gathered together the waters stood erected as a tidal wave and the depthness depthness of the sea did not move in the depthness of the sea kind of pronounce that wrong but as you can see you get you get what i'm saying here and, and the same thing to explain what's going on in exodus 15 and 8 we want to go back up to this um, picture that I have. We ha while there, while the waves, or the waters are roaring and raving at the top of the ocean, the depthnesses of the sea they're not even moving. They're still waters, and that's all that scripture is saying. Job 38 and 11, and said hitherto, in other words, when he and God said this far shall thy come he's talking to the waters but no further and here shall thy pride waves be stayed proverbs 8 and 29 when he gave to the sea his decree this word here is very important he gave to the waves his decree his law and what was that law we're going to go right back up here to Job 30 and 11 real quick. This far shall thy come, talking to the sea, but no further. 
and here shall thy pride waves be stayed. That is the decree, the law that God gave unto the water, that the waters should not pass his commandment when he appointed the foundations of the earth. Jeremiah 5 and 22. Fear you not me. This is um, God talking to Lord Christ in, in the Old Testament before he was made flesh. He's saying, fear you not me. You don't fear me. Saith the Lord. Will you not tremble at my presence, which which have placed the sand for the boundary of the sea by a perpetual decree? This perpetual decree means everlasting law that it cannot pass. And though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail, though they war, though they splash yet cannot pass over it. What is God talking about here? This is, he is talking about natural law. These verses is talking about natural law that God in the, on the second day, God created natural law. He set boundaries for everything, for the oceans and only God, um, can, um, change these natural laws. We are bound by these natural laws. God God is not bound by these natural laws. The, if, if God tells the water to come over the sand, they will come. But without God giving the waters permission to come over the sand, the waters are bound by natural law, which was created by Christ on the third day. When he basically, when he put the firmament in the middle of the waters, Let's go to Psalms 95 and 5. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Hebrews 6 and 7. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh off upon it, and bringeth forth herbs meat, for them by whom it is dressed, Receiveth blessings from God. Like I said, that is how it was stated in the old English. I'm going to read it again, but kind of my translations. So hopefully, and so hopefully can people can understand why I translate when I study my Bible. For the earth which for the earth which absorbs the rain that cometh often upon upon the earth and bring it forth herbs for food. So in other words, what he's saying here, that the earth absorbs rain, the rain helps bring forth herbs for food. This is a law, natural laws that Christ created on the third day. For them by whom it is planted, receiveth blessings from God. Genesis 2 and 5. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. I'm going to go, this is another scripture in the book of Genesis, and I'm just going to read through it. And God saw that after, this is at the end of the third day, and God saw that it was beautiful. When he say, when God said that he saw that it was good, this word, this word today, if we translate it, it will mean, and God saw that it was beautiful. Now, when, when God used the word beautiful, God not just talking about beautiful on the outside. He's saying not only was it beautiful on the outside when God created all these things, but it was beautiful because it worked correctly. 
technically we still use these terms today like if, uh, if a person seen another person we'll say that person looked good that means that person looks beautiful or um if somebody's saying like they have a good car that means the car is working properly so when in the beginning when god said and there was good what god was saying here is that it was beautiful it was pleasant to the eyes and it worked like it was supposed to work. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seeds. This word yield, this word yielding only means producing seeds. Um, so I'll go back. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass and herb producing seed and the fruit tree producing fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself it's talking about whose whose seed is in the fruit or herb that's all this that's all this scripture is saying upon the earth and it was so and the earth brought forth grass and herb producing seeds after his kind which means multiple kind and the tree producing fruit whose seed was in the fruit after his kind and God saw that it was beautiful and the evening and the morning were the third day so on the second and third day God created the laws of nature he set the firmament in the middle of the ocean he gave us an atmosphere and he set man's boundaries to the ground with gravity Jesus Christ set the physical law, the natural law, the scientific law, the laws of science, and the laws of the jungle. This earth is his. The sky is his. The sea and the dry land belong to him. And every living creature that fly in his sky and lives upon his dry land and swim in his seas is his. It all belongs to Christ. If Christ decides to take away his spirit, his breath, his oxygen, his natural laws, every living creature would perish. This is the gospel of the kingdom. These are the last days. Be zealous and repent. For the great and terrible day of the Lord is nearer than you think. And this concludes this Bible study.